Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the living room. We're the October. Today we're checking out the 1994 classic Forrest Gump. This will actually be the second movie we've watched on the channel from 1994. Our first one will be Shawshank Redemption. So I saw this movie when I was in maybe seventh grade or so. So that's been like 17 years for me. And I know Mrs. October has never seen this movie. So I'm excited to rewatch it with like a, I guess an adult perspective. And right. I know that you just need to see it honestly, because right. it's culture. So I have to. Um, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know the first time you saw Forrest Gump. Let me know if you love this movie. And I just remember this movie being really good and my friend Michael in school used to quote this movie all the time like every time he'd come into class he'd be like I must have had me 16 Dr. Peppers and just <laughs> stuff like that constantly so I definitely had to check it out just so I could basically like make friends with this dude in seventh grade that I just thought was so funny so that's my little backstory of why I've seen Forrest Gump I'm really excited to see it again let's go let's go and we do know Woody from Toy Stories in this and Captain Miller we know Saving him. Private Ryan mm -hmm. Tom Hanks baby A really peaceful, serene way to start the movie. The music and this little feather. Mm -hmm. This is nice. Very light. Those are some OG Nikes right there. Yeah, they look like they've been a few places. <laughs> <laughs> why is this? Why is this outfit so nice, but his shoes so busted? Yeah, good yeah, book. That's a good book. <laughs> yeah, I used to have that. My name's Forrest. Forrest Gump. He's friendly. Do you want a chocolate? Here we go. You even got to know this I one. I could eat about a million and a half of these. Remember, you didn't know how to. Mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I heard that before. Those must be comfortable shoes. <laughs> I wish I had shoes like that. <laughs> 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 Mom always said it. there's an awful lot you can tell about a person by their shoes. Where they go, where they been. He just intrigued her. I've worn lots of shoes. I bet if I think about it real hard, I could remember my first pair of shoes. <laughs> Mama said they'd take me anywhere. She said they was my magic shoes. All right, Forrest, open your eyes now. <laughs> oh, no. I was laughing at him because he's just like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What happened? Field. Probably a little he's stiff. A strong, Mr. Gump, but his back's as crooked as a politician. <laughs> but we're gonna straighten him right up. Oh. Isn't that Aunt May? Now, when I, I was know. a baby, Probably. Mama named Andrew me Garfield. the great Civil Byron. War hero, General Nathan Bedford Forrest. She said we oh, would no. relate to him in some way. He started up this club called the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> They'd all dress up in their robes and their bed sheets and act like a bunch of ghosts or spooks or something. That's how I got my name, Forrest Gump. <laughs> That's how he got it? He's just so naive to like the reality of it. Oh my gosh. What are y'all staring at? Haven't you ever seen a little boy with braces on his legs before? Let's go. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're better than you, Forrest. If God intended everybody to be the same, he'd have given us all braces on our legs. Mom always had a way of explaining things so I could understand them. Well said in a way, though, right? About a quarter right. mile off, about half mile from the town of Greenbow, Alabama. <laughs> That's in the county of Greenbow. <laughs> My house had been in Mama's family since. That's ago, so pretty. Like that. Since it was just me and Mama and we had all these empty rooms, Mama decided to let those rooms out. And that's how me and mama got money. Mama was a real smart lady. Oh, she's like renting the rooms. So like it has a, like a bed and breakfast thing. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Did you rooms to let. You're the same as everybody else. You are no different. Your boy's different, <laughs> Miss Gump. Now his IQ is 75. Forrest is right here. The state requires a minimum IQ of 80 to attend public school. Man, he's like right he's there. Gonna have to go to special school. But my boy Forrest is going to get the same opportunities as everyone else. He's not going to some special school to learn how to retread ties. There must be something can be done. Is that Mr. Gump? Mrs. Gump? Oh, That's no. where I thought he was going right there. <laughs> no. He's on vacation. Hey. 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 Oh, no. Hey. Man, I remember that part as a kid, but I didn't realize he sounded so odd. <laughs> Five points, right? Uh, your mama sure does care about your schooling, son. Mm -mm -mm. 
You don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't say much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate troll boy. <laughs> wow. It looked all inside. the book. First Mama, the... what's vacation mean? I was talking. Where Daddy went. Vacations when you go somewhere and you don't ever come back. Aww. Michael used to tell me my my dad was on vacation. <laughs> He's one man. Your dad's on vacation. There was always folks coming and going. Sometimes we had so many people staying with us that every room was filled with travelers. You know. That seems so stressful. One young man was staying with us, and he had him a guitar case. <laughs> I told you not to bother this nice young man. Oh, no, that's all right, man. I, I was just showing him a thing or two on the guitar here. Say, man, sh show me that crazy little walk you just did there. Is that supposed to be oh, Elvis? <laughs> I like that guitar. I started I was killing it. moving around to the music. <laughs> so he taught Swinging Elvis how to do that tips. dance? That's what they're saying? <laughs> do it, nothing more. <laughs> So he learned that from Boris. That's right. That little dude done shake the world, didn't he? <laughs> Jeez. Not for children's eyes. <laughs> Some years later, that handsome young man who they called the king, well, he sung too many songs. Oh, man. He had himself a heart attack or something. It must be hard being a king. <laughs> a king. I remember the bus ride on the first day of school very well. <laughs> She's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Not to be taking rides from strangers. <laughs> this is a bus to school. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. I'm Dorothy Harris. <laughs> well, now we ain't strangers anymore. Oh, that was so cute. Seats taken. Seats taken. <laughs> well, duh, there's two of you in it. Taken. Dang. Can't sit here. <laughs> <laughs> a northern boy in Alabama? I do remember the first time I heard you. Sweetest voice in the wide world. You can sit here if you want. <laughs> oh. I had never seen anything so beautiful in my life. He did too. What's wrong with your legs? I'm nothing at all, thank you. My legs are just fine and dandy. <laughs> That's cricket like a question mark. You're next to mama. No one ever shoes. talked to me or oh, asked you crying me already? questions. It's just so cute and for some reason. I'm Jenny. Oh. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. From that day on, we was always together. Oh. She taught me how to climb. Oh, I remember this part. I showed her how to dangle. <laughs> I showed her how to dangle. <laughs> she helped me learn how to read, and I showed her how to swing. <laughs> so dangerous. For some reason, Jenny didn't ever want to go home. She was my most special friend. This is so sweet. My only friend. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at the absurdity of these kids. What the heck? Right. Hurry up, let's Why are they gonna chase him on a bike? Run, Forrest, run! Everybody knows that line. That's where it's from. I think that's it. That's the iconic one right there. <laughs> he is a busted head. Uh oh. Done broke out the braces. Redemption music. I love it. This is about to be like the ultimate come up story. <laughs> now you wouldn't believe it if I told you that I could run like the wind blows. <laughs> She's like, mm hmm. That day on, I was going somewhere. I was running. <laughs> Oh. Dang! <laughs> he smoked him. He looks like the road runner, don't he? <laughs> He's so mad. <laughs> Dang, you saw that cut? Dang! That's his first run, too? Look! <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Look out for cars, bro. That boy sure is a running fool. <laughs> what? She lived in a house that was always Alabama. Her mama had gone up to heaven when she was five, and her Aww. daddy was some kind of a farmer. He was a very loving man. He was always kissing and touching her and her sisters. Oh. Uh. Jane, why'd you come to school today? Shh. Come on. Jane! Where'd you run to? 
Oh man, he's a nightmare, ain't he? Oh no. He didn't see him. Oh. Mama always said that God is mysterious. He didn't turn Jenny into a bird that day. He had the police say Jenny didn't have to stay in that house no more. Victory, dude. Let's she go. With a grandma. It made me happy because she was so close. That's tough, too, ain't it? Some nights, Jenny'd sneak out and come on over to my house. Just <laughs> she climbed? She was scared. Jenny and me was best friends all the way up through high school. Oh, man. <laughs> The same kids. Yeah, he's got a terrible throwing motion. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. But now they have a car. Run, Forrest, run! Oh, that's Jenny. So they've been doing this dance a while. Huh? <laughs> do the cut. Do the cut. Dang, Forrest got another gear. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he go back to the open road? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh, that was close. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Is he gonna catch it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's a four two five easy. Uh, roll tied. <laughs> what the hell is that? That lay is false gum, coach. I got to go to college too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. No way. No way. He <laughs> 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 for real play for Alabama. <laughs> Damn, they had a hell of a special team there. They love it. I thought I got a shot of the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. Now, <laughs> me, but... Two Negroes were admitted, but only after Governor George Wallace had carried out his symbolic threat to stand in the schoolhouse door. What's going on? Coons are trying to get into school. Coons? Well, right, Coons trying to get on our back porch. Mama just chased him off with a broom. Not right, <laughs> Coons, you idiot. And they want to go to school with us. With us? They do? He's carried like, well, that's dope. Front. And he went, walks all the way to the front. <laughs> What was he doing back there? <laughs> ...had been signed up for summer classes. Ma'am, you dropped your book. Let's go, Forrest. <laughs> He's just such a nice dude. Anyway, he's <laughs> just... <laughs> heck, go? A few years later, that angry little man at the schoolhouse door thought it'd be a good idea and ran for president. <laughs> She's just, he's just been talking to her the whole time. My bus is here. It was nice talking to you. When Wallace got shot, I was in college. Did you go to a girls' college or to a girls' and boys' together college? It was co-ed. Because Jenny went to a college I couldn't go to. It was a college just for girls. But you're probably like, who's I that? Her every chance I got. Oh, man. Are they like a couple, him and Jenny? To be determined, right? <laughs> oh, OK. I, don't I guess they so. just grew up together, right? They're like high school sweethearts, kind of. Kind of. It don't seem like they were ever, ever together. It just seemed like they were just best, really close, he, like just best friends. Friend, yeah. <laughs> He's on sight. <laughs> See, it's all good. Sorry. Look at you. Come on. Oh, I'm going to be. Yeah. Aren't I going to be me? Well, <laughs> Another kind of you. <laughs> you know, I want to be famous. Have you ever been with a girl, Forrest? I sit next to them in my home economics class all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. It was like he's about to get in trouble, don't he? Uh huh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Whoa. <sighs> oh. <laughs> Why do you Jeez, act like he's that? just that nervous, huh? Oh, I'm dizzy. <laughs> the 
that never happened in home hack. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> She's so disturbed. Oh, she heard that. <laughs> it didn't stop. <laughs> they even put me on a thing called the All America Team, where you get to meet the President of the United States. President Kennedy met with the collegiate All American football team at the Oval Office today. They put you oh, this in my this part. little room with just about anything you want to eat or drink. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, he has to be. Congratulations, how does it feel being all American? Very good, sir. Congratulations, how do you feel? I gotta pay. <laughs> Sometime later, somebody shot that nice young president when he was riding in his car. Let us know what y'all think. Now, can you believe it? I got a college degree. Mama was so proud. <laughs> Aww. Congratulations, son. Have you given any thought to your future? Hello, I'm Forrest. Forrest Gump. Nobody gives a husky shit who's the Lord's first ball. You're not even a Lord's Gump talking maggot. Get your faggoty ass on the bus. You're in the army now. Oh, he enlisted? Aww. Oh, man. Deja vu. Oh, uh. At first, it seemed like I made a mistake. Sit down if you want to. Aww. I didn't know who I might meet. You ever been on a real shrimp boat? <laughs> no. I've been working on shrimp boats all my life. I was just looking into buying a boat of my own and got drafted. People call me Bubba. Oh, that's like him. one of them old redneck boys. Can you believe that? <laughs> my name's Forrest Gump. People call me Forrest Gump. <laughs> His mama cooked shrimp. Mm. Mm. And her mama before her cooked shrimp. <laughs> and her mama before her mama cooked shrimp too. Bubba's family knew everything there was to know about the shrimping business. I know everything there is to know about the shrimping business. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going into the shrimping business for myself. God, <laughs> what's your sole purpose in this army? To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant. <laughs> God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius. <laughs> That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. <laughs> you are goddamn gifted. <laughs> Listen up, people. Fit in the army like one of them round pegs. You just make your bed real neat and remember to stand up straight. Is that clear? Yes, real yes, sergeant! <laughs> what you do is you just drag your nets along the buck. He's still doing it. On a good day, you can catch over 100 pounds of shrimp. That's what you spend on gas. You can make Done, drill sergeant! <laughs> Why did you put that weapon together so quickly, Gump? <laughs> Jesus H. Christ! Jesus. This is a new company record. Anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> you can barbecue it, boil it, brawl it, shrimp Creole. I love this guy. I'm, I'll be talking to him all day. Deep fry, deep fry, stir fry. There's pineapple shrimp. <laughs> Lemon shrimp. She knows shrimp everything shrimp there is to know about the shrimp business. Shrimp I love salad, it. Shrimp and potatoes, shrimp burger, mm. shrimp sandwich. That's that's about it. Oh no. <laughs> What's he gonna talk about now? Lonely time. Hey come. Get a load of the tits on her. <laughs> Jenny had gotten into some trouble over some photos of her in her college sweater. Oh, that's her. Thrown out of school. <laughs> no. What are the odds he would get that mag of her? Let's give a big round of applause to the luscious Bobby Dylan. That's her, straight from California. <laughs> How many roads must a man walk down? She's good. Her dream had come true. <laughs> Aww. Not really, though. <laughs> yeah. Expectations versus reality, right? Oh. <laughs> oh no no <laughs> he's on site that was intense doing this forrest you can't keep trying to rescue me all the time i can't help it I love you. You don't know what love is. No. I don't think you do either, though. You think I can fly off this bridge? Mm -hmm. 
What do you mean, Jenny? Nothing. I gotta get out of here. Force, you stay away from me, okay? You just stay away from me, please. Yeah, what in the world? They sending me to Vietnam. This is whole other country. <laughs> Listen, you promise me something, okay? Just if you're ever in trouble, don't try to be brave. You just run, okay? Just run away. Man, this is actually really heavy, isn't it? Jenny. Yeah. I write you all the time. Dang, man. So he just loves her so much, and she's just. She's just like she was gone. Dang, she's gone. <laughs> Wasn't the song on Tropic Thunder? Yeah, when they were on the air. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best song ever made for people flying in helicopters, ready for war. Really? I mean, it just fits, right? <laughs> this is such a like Vietnam <laughs> type song, you know what I'm saying? You mean the V dub? Mm. They're flying so close. Right. Very close to the barbecue. <laughs> hey, I bet they shrimp balls in these boys. <laughs> hey, I mean, these Vietnams is good shrimp. <laughs> I know. I'll be following him everywhere. Warning, mm -hmm. sir. Oh, get your hands down. Do not salute me. There are goddamn snipers all around this area who love to grease an officer. That's smart. I'm Lieutenant Dan Taylor. Welcome to Fort Platoon. We learned that in Hacksaw Ridge, but remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was born with big guns, sir. Yeah, well, you better tuck that in. I'm gonna get that caught on a tripwire. Oh, <laughs> what? Where are you boys from in the world? Alabama, sir. You twins? <laughs> No, we are not relations. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, stick with me. You learn from the guys that've been in country a while. You'll be all right. Just Lieutenant Dan sure knew his stuff. Somebody in his family had fought and died in every single American war. Oh no! Got, so you boys from Arkansas, huh? <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Little Rock. Now, go shake down. <laughs> See the platoon sergeant? Two standing orders in this platoon. Take good care of your feet. Try not to do anything stupid like getting yourself killed. What kind of lieutenant? <laughs> I sure hope I don't let him down. <laughs> <laughs> me too, bro. <laughs> Dang, this is making me laugh a lot. I know, it's making my cheeks hurt. I got hurt. to see a lot of the countryside. We would take these real long walks, and we were always looking for this guy named Charlie. That's what they would call them in the war, Charlie. That, that's, the, that's the opposition. That would mean the Vietnamese. Oh. They called him Charlie. He said we were always looking for a guy named Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't always fun. Lieutenant Dan was always getting these funny feelings, so he'd tell us to get down, shut up. Get down! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I love when Dan does that. But I think some of America's best young men served in this war. There was Dallas from Phoenix. Cleveland, he was from Detroit. Hey, <laughs> Tex. And Tex was, well, I don't remember where Tex <laughs> <laughs> This is about as charming as a movie as I'll ever see. I love it. Fire in the hole! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One day, it started raining, and it didn't quit for four months. Oh, no. Hey, Force, I'm going to lean up against you. You just lean right back against me. <laughs> this way, we don't have to sleep with our heads in the mud. <laughs> I got a very important question to ask you. How would you like to go into the shrimping business with me? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on that. <laughs> he didn't put any thought behind it. He said, okay. <laughs> we can just live right on the boat. We ain't got to pay no rent. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, 50-50, all the shrimp you can eat. That's a deal. Bubba did have a fine idea. I even wrote Jenna and told her all about it. But <laughs> you write like that. I, know. I told her what I was doing. I was a dry. Asked her what she was doing. And told her how I thought about her always. And how I was looking forward to getting a letter from her just as soon as she had the time. Oh man, she's headed to Woodstock. I thought I she was about to join the okay. Mansons. Love, Forrest, Gump. I like the music on here. Just like that, somebody turned off the rain. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah, I remember there was a big war. They like planned that almost.
Did he just pass Bubba? Yeah, he did. I ran and ran, just like Jenny told me to. I ran so far and so fast that pretty soon I was all by myself, which was a bad thing. Bubba. Bubba was my best good friend. I had to make sure that he was okay. Ran right back in there. And on my way back to find Bubba, Tex. Oh, that's his friend. And every time I went back looking for Bubba, somebody else was saying, help me, Forrest, help me. That's like Hacksaw Ridge. So he's a dang warrior, I too. Get we got Charlie all over this area. I gotta have those fast movers in here now. Over. Ah! God, I said leave me here. God damn it. Oh, he wants to down the battlefield, Bernie. Yeah, because like his whole family did. Then it felt like something just jumped up and bit me. What bit him? Oh, oh. <laughs> he got shot. <laughs> I got an airstrike inbound right now. They're going to nade the whole area. Oh, man. Don't you stay here, God damn it! That's an order! I gotta find Bubba! Okay, Boris. Mm. Come on. Come on. Boris okay. Gump is strong as hell. He's gonna let you, like, Ten people. Yeah. That's the air strike. Entirely too close. Man, Boa could have died in that. Hot smoke, get it out there. Hey, Bubba. Hey, Forrest. I want to go home. Bubba was my best good friend. Bubba was gonna be a shrimp and boat captain but instead he died right there by that river in Vietnam Aww. that was only his second friend too right that's all I have to say about that it was a bullet wasn't it that jumped up and bit you yes sir bit me directly in the buttocks <laughs> <laughs> they said it was a million dollar wound but the army must keep that money because I still haven't <laughs> seen a nickel that million dollars <laughs> <laughs> that gave me all the ice cream I could eat. No shot. And guess what? Good friend of mine was in the bed right next door. Lieutenant Dan. Oh boy. Lieutenant Dan. No. <laughs> use some ice cream. Oh, he's so mad at yeah, him, isn't ice he? Ice cream. <laughs> he took his legacy away. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the toilet. <laughs> Look at his butt thing. <gasps> oh man. Oh, and. No wonder he's mad. Poor Forrest, he just thought he was doing a good thing. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, oh, we my got gosh. mail. Sent back? You know how to play this? Come on, let me show you. No matter what happens, never, ever take your eye off the ball. Oh, he has to focus on something. <laughs> Just one, one thing. Is he like never about to take his eye off of it? Yeah. <laughs> came very natural to me, so I started playing it all the time. I played ping pong even when I didn't have anyone to play ping pong with. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He's too good. The hospitals people said it made me look like a duck in water. Whatever that means. the day. Even Lieutenant Dan would come and watch me play. <laughs> Sour puss. <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> Why did he grab him? We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens. It's all part of a plan. I should have died out there with my men. But now, I'm nothing but a goddamn cripple. Do you know what it's like Jeez. not to be able to use your legs? Well, yes, sir, I do. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to die in the field with honor. This wasn't supposed to happen. Not to me. Aww. I was Lieutenant Dan Taylor. You still Lieutenant Dan. That's what I was gonna say. That's tough though, because I do get what he's saying. What am I gonna do now? <laughs> Just so accurate. Son, you've been awarded the Medal of Honor. They want to give me a Oh, God. What'd they do with Lieutenant Dan? They sent him home. 
Dang, he didn't even say bye. No, he's mad at him. Two weeks later, I left Vietnam. America owes you a debt of gratitude, son. Another president he gets to meet. Where were you hit? In the butt talk, son. Oh. <laughs> the oh no. <laughs> God damn, son. <laughs> streets with awful crowded with people looking at all the statues and monuments. Those are the peace protesters and he's like in the army here. <laughs> and he's just taking Everywhere pictures. I, went, I had to stand in line. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why is he in Bryant? They think he's about to speak out against like the war and he's like in the army. <laughs> like a propaganda piece. Oh no. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh no. <laughs> He just won the medal too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Look at all those people. Oh my <laughs> goodness. What's he even gonna say? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the war, man. War in Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> he got caught up, man. <laughs> you see all these signs. I feel like that's for his life. He keeps getting caught up. <laughs> well, there's only one thing I can say about the war in Vietnam. <laughs> Why is he sabotaging? He probably was gonna say it rained a lot or something. <laughs> An oinker. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. No shot, dude. We didn't even get to hear it. <laughs> That's the right on, man. You said it all. My name is Forrest, Forrest Gump. Forrest! Forrest! There she is. Dang, he has good eyesight. Who else would be shouting his name in that voice? You know, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I know that voice anywhere. And he had one of the most iconic moments in the in protest the of the of war. Yeah. <laughs> Just a legend, man. A true legend of Jen Alley. <laughs> The legend of America. It was the happiest moment of my life. Jenny and me was just like peas and carrots again. <laughs> she showed me around and even introduced me to some of her new friends. Shut that blonde man and get your white ass away from that window. Don't you know we in a war here? <laughs> hey man, he's cool. He's cool. He's one of us. Let me tell you about us. What the hell is Our oh, he's caught up with the Panthers. I know. <laughs> from the racial. This is my good friend I told you about. This is Forrest Gump. Of course, this is Weston. Hey, yes, we are against all these races and imperial. Oh. Oh, no. Stop it! Oh, that's gonna come off wrong. A military dude beating Oh, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he should not be hitting you, Jenny. Come on, Forrest. Sorry I had a fight in the middle of your Black Panther party. <laughs> What in the world? Like I would never hurt you, Jenny. I wanted to be your boyfriend. That uniform is a trip, Forrest. Uh-oh. <laughs> we walked around all night, Jenny and me. It was a very special night for the two of us. Wish you wouldn't go, Jenny. No. Jenny, things got a little out of hand. Just this war and that, that lying son of a bitch, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Never hurt you. <laughs> Dang it, Johnson. You should go home to Greenbow, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, this is good. We have very different lives, you know. I want you to have this. Jeez. She's protesting against it. <laughs> I got it just by doing what you told me to do. Aww. Why are you so good to me? You're my girl. <laughs> I'll always be your girl. Was that sweet or what? That was too sweet. I've never said all so many times in a movie. <laughs> Honk. He said that lion son of a bitch, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we yelled, Greenbow Alabama. Just like that, she was gone out of my life again. Oh, man. I thought I was going back to Vietnam, <laughs> but instead they decided the best way for me to fight the communists was to play ping pong. Oh so my I was gosh. Into special services. I was so good that some years later, the army decided that I should be on the All-America ping pong team. 
You were the first American to visit the land of China. <laughs> the land of China. Said, but all I did was play ping pong. Uh, here he is, Forrest Gump. <laughs> He's always so awkward and all this. So this guy's like really famous, huh? Mm -hmm. Forrest Gump, John Lennon. John Lennon. <laughs> Welcome home. Had quite a trip. Can you uh, tell us um, what was China like? <laughs> In the land of China, people hardly got nothing at all. No possessions? They never go to church. No religion, too? Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't he like a big communist or something? John Lennon? Yeah. I don't know. He's just a beetle. That's all I know. For no particular reason at all, somebody shot, you know? I should know more about the Beatles. Now that's Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> oh. Lieutenant Dan! They gave you Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh-oh. <laughs> and he gave yes, it to Jenny. <laughs> the moron who goes on television and makes a fool out of himself. The Congressional Medal of Honor. That, that's just perfect. <laughs> no. That was a long thing. <laughs> what do you do here in New York, Lieutenant Dan? I'm living off the government tip. <laughs> suck it. Suck it. Hey, oh my hey, God! Hey, you get out! Of here. Come on, come. I stayed with Lieutenant Dan and celebrated the holidays. Have you found Jesus yet? No. I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for him, so. <laughs> <laughs> what an answer! If I. Jesus. You kind of look like him. I was about to say, look in the oh, mirror, you might. He said, God is listening, but I have to help myself. Now, if I accept Jesus into my heart, Ew. I'll get to walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. Did you hear what I said? Walk beside him in the kingdom of heaven. God is listening? What a crock of shit. Why don't you get your ass down to the corner and get us another bottle of Rick? Yes, sir. <laughs> We're at approximately 45th yes, Street in New York City. <laughs> He's not your lieutenant anymore. <laughs> he said, well, before you go. <laughs> I made me a promise to Bubba in Vietnam. As soon as the war was over, we'd go in partners. He'd be the captain of the shrimp boat and I'd be his first mate. A promise is a promise, Lieutenant Dan. I can't help but laugh even when he says sad things like that because the way he says it is just perfect. Like it's just yeah. so, it's so good. It's so pure. Dave, that you are a shrimp boat captain, I will come and be your first mate. Mr. Hot Wheels. Mr. Hot Wheels. My name is Spark. He's so nervous. Don't you just love New Year's? You can start all over. But in the middle of all that fun, I began to think about Jenny. That's not even the same dude she left with. He was like a calm head. Uh, yeah. I thought that was about to be Jenny's room again. <laughs> Forrest was just sitting there, literally not inviting them at all. <laughs> oh, what are you stupid or something? What's your problem? What did your friend do for something? What did you say? Said he's your friend stupid or something. Hey, don't call him stupid. Hey, don't you punch her. We'll leave it Get or the hell out of here. Get out of here. Who cut the music? <laughs> Man, he got so worked up, he hopped out the chair. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, had Forrest's back, though. Yeah, he did. He stuck up for him. I'm sorry I ruined your New Year's Eve party, Lieutenant Diane. She tastes like cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the way he just said that. He didn't want to be called crippled, just like I didn't want to be called stupid. A few months later, they invited me and the ping pong team to visit the White House. Again. So I went again. <laughs> <laughs> but I met the president of the United States again. <laughs> Only this time they didn't get us rooms in a real fancy hotel. So are you enjoying yourself in our nation's capital? Nixon. Oh, no, I know of a much nicer hotel. It's brand new, very modern. <laughs> you might want to send a maintenance man over to that office across the way. The lights are off and they must be looking for a fuse box or something because in flashlights, they're keeping me awake. Is that a scandal? Watergate, yeah. Oh, no. and he called it in. Oh, because Nixon invited on the Watergate. Yeah, <laughs> I shall resign, presidency. Dang, Boris, you didn't even know. He said they must be looking for a fuse box. <laughs> <laughs> they look at hard for a fuse box. I have your discharge papers. Service is up, son. Oh, let's go, babe. This really is like a 
like an all Americana movie. Right. Your free agent. Because he is just inner green and interwoven in it. If it wasn't for Forrest, a lot of things wouldn't have happened in yeah. US history. <clears throat> So I went home. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm home, Mama. We've had all sorts of visitors, boys. <laughs> Everybody wants you to use their ping pong stuff. <laughs> One man even left a check for $25,000 if you'd be agreeable to saying you like using their paddle. So I went on down to buy a battery to meet Bubba's family and make the introduction. They kind of got a nice spot. I paid my respect to Bubba himself. Mm. Hey, Bubba, it's me, Forrest Gump. I'm taking the $24,562.47 well, that, that's left after well, a new haircut and a new suit. And I took Mom out to a real fancy dinner and I bought a bus <laughs> ticket and three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> He's so honest with Bubba. So anyway, I'm putting all that on gas, ropes, and new nets, brand new shrimping boat. Oh my gosh. He really did it. This man can do anything he sets his mind to. Oh. oh. He called barnacles. Oh, he got a shell. <clears throat> shrimping is tough. Oh, we got one. I only caught five. <laughs> a couple of boys, you could have yourself a cocktail. <laughs> I love that optimism. Hey, you ever think about naming this old boat? It's bad luck to have a boat without a name. What's he gonna name it, baby? Probably Was something with one Bubba one. in it. The most beautiful name. Oh, Jenny. Dang world. it. That was my other guess. Well, there's really only two guesses, right? Because it wasn't going to be Lieutenant Dan. Jenny has no idea there's a boat out there named after Oh. Oh. <laughs> she really has no idea. Mm. The bird you cannot change. Where's she going? This is the second time she's going to try this stunt. Stop it. So ever since the little girl, she's just been deeply unhappy, huh? And she's going through all this and Forrest just thinks the world over still. <gasps> she was looking up at the same moon as Forrest. I thought about Jenny all the time. Dang, he can't even like call her either. <laughs> What do you say? He made him a promise, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your boat. <laughs> Your boat. <laughs> what do you? Why would you do this? Why do you do all that? Because he can't believe it. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, thought I'd try out my sea legs. <laughs> well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Oh no. <laughs> I told you if you were ever a shrimp boat captain that I'd be your first mate. Well, here I am. How did it swing around? Go get it. It's my boat. It stopped. We'll find some shrimp, so take a left. You don't know what he's talking about. Over there, oh my gosh. <laughs> he's locked in. That's right. <laughs> 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 Find those shrimp, my boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. A toilet seat, no. Well, how are we gonna find them? Well, maybe you should just pray for shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to church every Sunday. <laughs> Dang, look at that helmet. It's like a World War II helmet or something. I know y'all could at least sell that for some money. No oh no. A storm. What are shrimp just gonna jump on the boat or something? <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, he was mad. <laughs> I'm supposed to die on the field. <laughs> Hurricane Carmen came through here yesterday, destroying nearly everything in its path. Oh no. Biolabattery's entire shrimping industry has fallen victim to oh. Carmen and has been left in utter ruin. No. Speaking of local, only one shrimping <laughs> boat actually survived the storm. No. I remember that now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, no way. <laughs> yes. We were the 
only boat left standing. <laughs> Bubba got shrimp's what they got. <gasps> That's so awesome. We got a whole bunch of boats, 12 Jennies. Hold on there, boy. Are you telling me you're the owner of the Bubba Gump Shrimp Corporation? Yes, sir. We got more money than David Crockett. <laughs> <laughs> boy, I heard some whoppers in my time, but that tops them all. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> we were sitting next to a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Him right there. Fortune magazine, uh, bro. What the heck? <laughs> Let me tell you something about Lieutenant Dang. I never thanked you for saving my life. How are you gonna say that and just jump in? He plopped in. He made his peace with God. I'd say so. Did he come back to the boat? I, I don't know. Today. Oh, there he goes. Base to Jenny one. Force had a phone call. His mama said. Oh, I knew it. Dang, he just runs home. <laughs> he just runs across the country, don't he? Hi, Forrest. We sure got you straightened out, didn't we, boy? Same That's doctor. the same doctor, yeah. My doctor's one of the best doctors of all time. What's the matter, mama? I'm dying, Forrest. It's my time. Don't you be afraid, sweetheart. Death is just a part of life. Something we're all destined to do. I didn't know it, but I was destined to be your mama. You have to do the best with what God gave you. What's my destiny, Mom? You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're gonna get. She had got the cancer and died on a Tuesday. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> now, because I'd been a football star and a war hero and the college graduate just city falls of greenbow alabama decided to get together and offered me a fine job i never went back to work for lieutenant dan though he did take care of my bubba gump money he got me invested in some kind of fruit company I apple him saying we don't have to worry about money no more and i said that's good one less thing <laughs> that's all one less now, thing only, i gave a whole bunch of it to the four square gospel church <laughs> Look at the rainbow. I know. To the bio of the battery fishing hospital. I gave Bubba's mama Bubba Shea. Oh no. <laughs> she didn't have to work in nobody's kitchen no more. Oh. Look at her. And because I was a gozillionaire and I liked doing it so much, I cut that grass for free. <laughs> he was a gazillionaire, he said. I'd always think of Jenny. I thought that was real at first. Me too. I really don't remember this movie as much as I thought I would, to be honest. My dad bought one of those lawnmowers one time just to have it. <laughs> and it was so uncomfortable. It was a good lawnmower, though. This is a pretty spot. A lot of grass to cut, though. And then she was there. Hello, Forrest. Hello, Jenny. <laughs> It's so sad how she just keeps popping back up, though. Almost like she's using them in a way. I mean, not quite, but... Jenny came back and stayed with me. Every day, we'd take a walk, and I'd jab her on like a monkey in a tree, and she'd listen about ping-ponging and shrimping and Mama <laughs> making a trip up to heaven. Whoa. That's her house? Yeah, it looks so much different, doesn't it? So she's back to, like, the source of all of her trauma, really. Yeah. Sometimes I guess there just aren't enough rocks. <laughs> Aww. We was like peas and carrots again. I love that he keeps saying that. Every They're day, like peas and carrots. I'd, she gave me the best gift anyone could ever get sure. in the wide world. Just for honey. <laughs> That's the shoes he was wearing. The, yeah. And it was the happiest time of my life. Will you marry me? I'd make a good husband, Jenny. You would, Forrest. But you won't marry me. You don't want to marry me. Why don't you love me, Jenny? I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. Jenny. Forrest, I do love you. Forrest was ready this time. Oh, so they're going to be together now. 
She's just a random woman, baby. Or not. Where well, are you running off to? I'm not running. That's just oh, so sad, no. man. He doesn't deserve that at all. <laughs> and she left the medal. Do you think Forrest makes her feel inadequate? I don't know. That day, for no particular reason, I decided to go for a little run. So I ran to the end of the road, and when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run to the end of town. <laughs> He's a running fool. When I That's got not there, what they said. I yeah. thought maybe I'd just run across Greenbow County. Maybe I'd just run across the great state of Alabama. And that's what I did. I ran clear across Alabama. What? No I ran clear to the ocean. What in the world? Santa Monica. And when I got there, I figured since I'd gone this far, I might as well turn around. Just keep on going. <laughs> that's how we are when we walk sometimes. When I, got, when I got hungry, I ate. When I had to go, you know, I went. Ew. <laughs> so he just was a cross country runner? I guess so. Wow. <laughs> that's beautiful, though. That'd be wild, man, to run across the country. That really would. But you need a water bottle on deck. That'd be so much more unique than like driving it. Yeah, because you could actually like go places you couldn't you in a car. You can see the cracks in the road, you know. I'll be damned. Sir, why are, you why are you running? Are you doing this for world peace? Are you doing this for the homeless? Are you running for women's rights? <laughs> or for the environment? <laughs> or for animals? They just oh, couldn't believe are. that somebody would do all that running for no particular reason. Why are you doing this? <laughs> he keeps saying that, no particular reason. For some reason what I was doing seemed to make sense to people. I mean, it was like an alarm went off in my head, you know? Here's somebody who has the answer. I'll follow you anywhere, Mr. Gump. I, I used to think that about the bread guy. <laughs> and then, even more people joined. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I was wondering if you might help me, huh? Listen, I'm in the bumper sticker business, and I've been trying to think up a good slogan. And just, Whoa, man, you just ran through a big pile of dog shit. <laughs> it happens. What, shit? And some years later, I heard that that fella did come up with a bumper sticker slogan and he made a lot of money <laughs> off of it. <laughs> I was running oh, along. That's hilarious. Somebody who would like Here, use this one. Nobody likes that color anyway. Well, some years later, I found out <laughs> what? that man did come up with an idea for a t-shirt. He made a lot of money off of it. <laughs> I had run for three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. Quiet. Quiet. He's going to say something. I'm... Pretty tired. Think I'll go home now. If it's still there. Oh hell no! Look at all those people. Did they think he had an answer or something? <laughs> they thought they was just running for higher meaning, I guess. <laughs> Another purpose is shot. <laughs> now what are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, my running days was over. So I went home to Alabama. One day, out of blue, clear sky, I got a letter from Jenny wondering if I could come down to Savannah and see her, and that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> wow. You don't need to take a bus. Henry Street is just five or six blocks. Oh, wow. Way. Easy worker for you. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Bye, lady. <laughs> your house yeah it's messy right now i just got off work it's not bad nice thank you i um uh... <laughs> why <laughs> hey i kept i kept scrapbook of your of your clippings and everything there you are oh she's proud of him in? i ran a long way for a long time i want to apologize for anything that i ever did to you because i was messed up for a long time and hey you She's this a kid. Is from Alabama. This is my very good friend, Mr. Gump. Here, can you say hi to him? Hello, Mr. Gump. Oh. Hello. No. He is so cute. I'm a mama. His name's Forrest. Oh. Like me. I named him after his daddy. <laughs> he got a daddy named Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. You're his daddy, Forrest. Oh, man. There's nothing you need to do, okay? You didn't do anything wrong. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> he said it was her at first. But is, is he smart? Or is he's very smart. 
He's one of the smartest in his class. Yeah, it's okay. Go talk to him. Why do you watch, eh? Fortnite. <laughs> I wonder why she just now decides. So I guess when he was growing up this whole time, he was on his run? Oh, yeah. It has been like three years. I'm sick. I have some kind of virus. They don't know what it is, and there isn't anything they can do about it. You could come home with me, Jenny, you and Little Forest. Come stay at my house in Greenbow. I'll take care of you if you're sick. Would you marry me, Forrest? Okay. Forrest? Too bad his mom ain't there. Star. Hi. You're tired. This is so cute because it's like still her style. Yeah. <gasps> Look at there. Lieutenant Dane. He's walking. Lieutenant Dane. Hello, Forrest. You got new legs. <laughs> new legs. <laughs> Custom made. Titanium alloy. Magic legs. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is my Jenny. Hey, it's nice to meet you finally. <laughs> Do you, or, Jenny? you notice he doesn't have like a huge wedding. That's all over the top. And he's a gazillionaire. Is that the same room his mom was in too? Mm -hmm. Were you scared in Vietnam? I don't know. Sometimes it would stop raining long enough for the stars to come out. And then it was nice. What a shot. Those old million sparkles on the water. Like that mountain lake that was so clear, Jenny. It looked like there were two skies, one on top of the other. It was so beautiful. I wish I could have been there with you. You were. Ooh. I love you. You died on a Saturday morning. I had you placed here under a tree. And I had that house of your father bulldozed to the ground. Mama always said dying was a part of life. I sure wish it was. <laughs> Little Forrest. He's doing just fine. About to start school again soon. I make his breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. I make sure he combs his hair, brushes his teeth every day. Teaching him how to play ping pong. Oh my god, he's so tiny. <laughs> oh my gosh. And every night we read a book. He's so smart, Jenny. You'd be so proud of him. I am. He wrote you a, a letter. And he says, I can't read it. It's supposed to, so I just leave it here for you. Oh. I don't know if we each have a destiny. Or if we're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. But I, I think maybe it's both. I miss you, Jenny. If there's anything you need, I won't be far away. Right by the tree. I feel like I have to get it together for a little forest. <laughs> but I like can't so hard. Well, did you see the birds? The symbolism? When she prayed. But, oh. Hey. I'm gonna serve that for so and tell because Bram used to read it to you. Oh. My favorite book. <laughs> the feather fell out. There you go. I want to tell you I love you. I love you too, Daddy. Oh. <laughs> you understand this is the bus to the school now, don't you? Of course. And you were Dorothy yours, and I'm oh. Forrest Gump. That's the same bus driver. Man, I know that feeling. I've had that one tons of times. What a way to end it, man. Oh my gosh. That's the end? Seems like it. That's how they started it. Okay, guys. That was Forrest Gump, babe. That was your first time watching it. What do you think about that movie? Gosh, that was like one of the best movies I've possibly ever seen in my life. 
you know um, i loved it we say that a lot on the channel oh this is one of the great movies but you know what we're reacting to really good movies over here man uh if it's winning our polls it's probably an all-time classic movie for sure so a lot of requests to watch this one that one that's why we put it in the poll um i just thought that was an amazing movie man it really brought me back it was nostalgic this movie had so many lessons in it i really thought the movie was like a time capsule it just brought me back to a different time it was very nostalgic to watch it i forgot the storyline and there was a lot that went on with the story which was really an odd story basically at the end of the day but there was a lot going on that i forgot about but there was so many little things that forrest gump said that just made me remember i guess the first time i saw the movie right. so it just goes to show you how timeless it is the reason that i say it was an odd story man because there was no like main objective you know what i'm saying every movie has like the main thing that the hero has to get over and then you know you know how that goes but. well i feel like he kind of did it was jenny <laughs> Yeah, there that you was go. him. That was, was what he was chasing the entire movie, pretty right. much. So Forrest basically started his life out disadvantaged. Uh, he came from a house, uh, a single mom house. At that, everyone said from a young age that he would basically amount to nothing. I mean, a lot of people have heard that story before. He was handicapped also, so he basically started like at the bottom right. in a his lot of IQ different was ways. A right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So started at the bottom, man, and it wasn't until he went through trials and tribulations and was eventually. Forced out of his comfort zone until he really like opened up and eventually he started running and the symbolism was great, but he literally ran until he broke out of the braces, which was like in a way him just coming to, I guess right. you could say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a kid, he was just very socially awkward and there was just one constant in his life and it just started from a young age and it was it was like a really beautiful thing. But in a way, like it kind of wasted his life away because he spent his life chasing her. But that faithful day when that little girl said that you can sit by me on the bus like that day really changed, changed his, life. his whole life yeah yeah did you think about loss the the episode the constant when you thought about jenny no i didn't oh i, didn't. I did that that had me thinking about that so hard just yeah. because like everything forrest went through no matter what jenny was the one thing like that remained the same even though she didn't remain the same but his feelings for her did i was sitting there trying to decide how i feel about jenny it, it's really hard to say it's very difficult it's hard for me to speak on she came from a very broken home right, right. her dad obviously was abusing her in the end guys I, I did catch that she died of aids okay so i'm pretty sure that that's what the implication was because she got a virus that no one had a cure for and oh she was a product okay. of like the woodstock era and like the free love yeah, era so. so so forrest was on the fighting side of it and she was on like the the protest like there was the whole like protest right. side you oh, could even see in her apartment at the very end of the movie there was still symbolism of her past like there was a lot of like uh, you could just see little pieces in her apartment even even as like an adult that you could okay. make parallels to like her past so yeah basically jenny was someone i hate to say it i really hate to say it because i loved her character i really did but she was someone who was kind of screwed up man she from a very young age, didn't receive love from someone who was supposed to protect her and care about her. Mm -hmm. Instead, she was abused by that person. And I think that it just shook her world. Like, it just shook her, her world up. Yeah. yeah, did it not. And it made her go down a really bad path. But like, luckily, it seems like when she found out she was pregnant, she turned it around because she had air conditioning, like Forrest said. Well, Jenny was someone Jenny's the most Jenny seems to be the most interesting character in the movie for sure right because mm. Forrest is just simply guided by his heart but Jenny's not so simple you know deep down she's a good person she loves Forrest I really do believe she has a love for Forrest but she keeps chasing the same men that her dad was like a lot of women who suffer that trauma tend to go with like they can they tend to deal with that because they feel like that's how they're loved by that kind of relationship when yeah. they've been there so yeah I mean, what? well said. Uh, you could just see she was rambling, like just all the symbolism, like even like just all of her life choices. Basically, she was just trying to run to other people who could make her feel like she fit in, I guess. But when but it was interesting because then when she did have everything, like she did have the family life, she did have forest, she did have, you know, the beautiful picket fence and the dream yard and the great when she had all that, it just wasn't enough for her. Right. Like she, she still had to run. She like, well, she chased pain and suffering. Yeah. Like she kind of thrived in it. She liked it. And that's just one of the things it's hard to admit sometimes, but sometimes we just, we like the toxicity of it all. And she just seemed like someone who she just wasn't destined for a normal life. And, right. you know, she even said like from the beginning, like she just wanted to chase fame. She wanted right. to be famous on the stage. And, you know, I think as you mature and become older and become like more of an adult, you realize like that's not all it's cracked up to be. I mean, if someone's going to pay you a lot of money to go sing on a stage, it's going to come with a ton of stipulations. And mm -hmm. Forrest just blindly just loved her. Anyways, he loved her man. all the same, like yeah. no matter what. And 
that to me was like i don't know like if it if it like because to me it sucked for force you know because he had to like love someone over and over who constantly just kept like you know letting Wasted him down his life away yeah pretty much sense, yeah. but in the same way not because it gave him his son who was like everything to him you know i think what the movie also is trying to say is like love doesn't have to be your idea of it right you know and that's easy to say if you're you know, defending Jenny, it's a lot harder to say if you're forced. I'm sure he would have rather had like a traditional type of love. But I think ultimately it just is so much symbolism. Like Forrest just represented like the innocent kid and everyone, you know, like Forrest run. So Forrest runs. They tell mm -hmm. him, grab the ball and run. And dude, he'll run. It's just very yards. black and white. There's very. no like gray areas or anything right. in between. And Jenny kind of was the gray area, you know, <laughs> she was everything in between. And I think as adults, we grow up and we really lose sight of the idea that if you just stay present in the moment and if you just put one foot in front of the other, I mean, life's very simple, you know, a lot of the social anxieties we feel, a lot of, you know, the addictions we have, a lot of that stuff really is mental, you know. Um, Forrest was just showing us that if we can all just stay in that childlike mentality and just love unconditionally. But also learn from yeah. your experiences because I, in this movie, every step of the way, Forrest learned like so much about everything and like even meeting Bubba and like keeping that promise, keeping that promise to Lieutenant Dan, like all the people in his life just were really like, God, oh, how can I say it? How can, how's the right way to say it? Well, ultimately Forrest was someone who, who served his, he lived his life in service, right? And he was a very unselfish person. And I think ultimately in the end, after he had lost certain people, like there was still people who would show up for him because he earned it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He really, because he showed up for them. Absolutely, he did. And yeah, man, he was just someone that from a young age could have made every excuse and could have felt sorry for themselves. But at the end of the day, he woke up every day and just he, he just didn't overthink things, man. He tackled life. He tackled life in a very just just a great way, man. Just a very, I don't know, man, just take life by the horns type of way. I just thought it was a beautiful story. I thought the music was great. The symbolism was I amazing. love how they added to to the story like. He's waiting at the bench and he's telling different people the full, the full and circle. And just like their reactions to it is, is a, I love that touch. It's, it's amazing. Everything from 94 so far that we've seen has been amazing. Yeah. This movie was so good in a lot of ways, but another thing I wanted to mention is how this movie made me feel internally. Cause like I said, I have seen this movie before and yeah. What, what was the, like, did you like it better now? Oh, I liked it so much better. Uh, the characters in this was great. Like I love Bubba's character. Bubba meant so much to Forrest. Bubba really taught Forrest so much about keeping your word. He taught him a different perspective. He taught him that sometimes you got to do things to keep your word and it works out and it's for other people other than yourself. So Bubba's right. family was able to get out of the kitchen and they were able to finally retire and stuff. And it just goes to show you, man, that uh, at the end of the day, it's just a network of people, man. And what you do, the decisions you make, regardless of how you feel your intentions are what your motives are it affects other people man and sometimes if you just someone. do the right thing and wake up and just do your best good things will happen to you and i i really do believe that still holds true today um i know it's really discouraging sometimes in the world but but this movie really made me feel nostalgic i feel like uh yeah man nothing was really different i didn't really remember the story like i said there was just a lot of little one-liners and stuff that i kind of remembered right. i guess yeah it just made me it brought me back to a place of just feeling at ease man like you know it really reminded me of being a kid and i have to think about bills and right. stress and who knows man i never in a million years would have thought i'd be sitting here reacting to forrest gump on the internet at that time i can tell you that i cannot believe i went that long without seeing it like all like i've seen so many references and you know some of those quotes i noticed but the only thing like meme wise i noticed was there's like forrest gump and he's waving on that boat that's crashing yeah i've seen that meme before this is one of those things I have so many thoughts because we could go through all the scenes of this movie and just break down how beautiful they were. I mean, everything from Lieutenant Dan, just the way he was supposed to die on a battlefield. And Forrest did the right thing. He saved him. Lieutenant Dan didn't have the perspective yet to see it that way. But, you know, he had a life to live, too. And he went through his own experiences. And it just all came full circle. This was such a right. full circle movie. It Lieutenant was. Dan eventually walked, became happy, uh, became married, had a wife, found purpose. And there's just so many things that would have been possible Without Forrest Gump. And Forrest Gump can mean a lot of things, guys. He could be a metaphor for just someone in your life. He could be a metaphor for someone who inspires you. You know, obviously there's no real life Forrest Gump, but it just goes to show you, you don't have to be a brilliant genius. You really don't have to do that. Sometimes just yeah, so waking up. Best. Yeah, just caring about your mama and just mm -hmm. taking care of your family and just going to work and doing the best you can do. It, sometimes it's really all just 
Like he could have been faced with so many choices and he just chose like the right path. Well, you know, Forrest Gump didn't have a selfish bone in his body. And I think that's (laughs) one of the things that, you know, one of the things of this movie is he seems to be the happiest character. Well, in a sense, I don't know. His mama (laughs) seemed pretty happy too. Yeah, she was just, and and you know, a lot of that rubbed off on him. Yeah, 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 for sure. And every person that Forrest met, you could see a little like, you know, it just had a little bit of, of his life in him. Basically, Forrest could have spent a lot of his time saying, why me? But yeah. instead, he just thought of other people. And it just seemed like that was just his formula to a really fruitful, happy life. So, I mean, he even said it in the movie, like, he was a gazillionaire. And it just made him so happy he cut that grass for free. I mean, right. if you really <laughs> think about what that means, guys, I mean, that's that's Forrest in a nutshell. So Just a selfless dude. Like, that's absolutely. that's the best way you can put Forrest Gump. Yeah. Somebody that we should all strive to be, like, 100%. Absolutely. And this is one of those, another one of those movies where... We're just happy we're sh- we're sharing a feel good moment with you guys, Patreon, especially you guys, because you chose this and you knew this was going to happen. There was so many parts in this movie, though, that are just going to stick out to me forever. Like when he says, uh, keep your socks dry. And he's like, I sure hope I don't let them down. <laughs> and then uh, and then it rains for like three months or something. Yeah. And then uh, Bubba goes, you just put your back on mine and I'll put my back on yours. Is that way we don't got to sleep with our heads in the mud? <laughs> I, I, just certain scenes like that, man. I just loved it um they just are feel good like they well there's a lot of good. there's a lot of quotes in here that i'm gonna be saying my favorite i think is i must have had 16 dr peppers i it think that's 15, my favorite but... one. is it 15 <laughs> yeah what was your favorite uh forrest gump wine in this movie uh i it had to be just the just the me and jenny go together like peas and carrots like i good, just yeah. love that just because it's so cute i like when forrest goes and i was scared but lieutenant dan he was mad or angry or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, he was yelling. Yeah, that part. He's just yeah. like cussing to the wind. <laughs> Man, that was good. That was such a good movie. I, again, Patreon. Babe, you can the, always pick. What, okay, at the end of the day, babe, what is the point of this movie? Honestly, I just think it's a way for us to like watch a really quick, like little, like, you know, fast little pace thing about like the American life, like. From 1940 to like 1978. I definitely think what the movie is about is just don't get too ahead of yourselves, man. Like just stay simple. You know, at the end of the day, if you become some football star or, you know, whatever the case may be, if your dreams come true and whatever you're, um, this movie was basically about the American dream in a lot right, of ways. hundred percent, hundred percent. This was about the American dream. And it basically goes to show, you know, even if you become rich and famous, no matter what you accomplish, you're never bigger than where you came from. Uh, Forrest had the world literally. I mean, he 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 could have accomplished anything he wanted. At and the he's end just of the a day, boy from Greenbow, Alabama. And at the end of the day, all he ever really wanted in his life was to just feel the love of Jenny and to just be with his family ultimately. And I think the point of the movie is it doesn't matter if it's the year three thousand twenty three or if it's you know the nineteen twenties, whatever the case may be. Man, just care about your family. Just slow down a little bit. Try to not live beyond your means and just enjoy the good things you know what i'm saying because this movie really made me think back it just made me nostalgic i guess because it got me thinking about like seventh grade and like my friend michael i met and how he used to quote the movie and i just got to Aww. thinking like those were just such good times you right. know what I'm easy saying? times like, right? such easy good times and i understand that that's just because we were younger and we had like adolescent minds and we didn't have like the stresses and the responsibilities and we didn't have like, like all we had to care about was like frizzy hair, not like bills. Well, there's there's something very bliss about being ignorant to things, too. So, yeah, it was just very easy back then. It was nostalgic. And I think a lot of the truth is, is life could be a lot more like that if we chose for it to be. You know, at the end of the day, back then, I didn't have cell phones and computers and all that. But I mean, I make that choice. Right. And it was just really nostalgic times, man. It just reminds me. I don't know, man. A movie like this will just make you want to hold the door open for somebody 100%. Right. And, that's and why as an American, I suck for not watching this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Hit us up on Patreon. This movie was absolutely incredible. If you enjoy content like this, just, you know, like the video. That'll let us know that you want to see more videos like this. Because to be honest, we kind of branch out into like three different categories because we got Game of Thrones going on right now. We've been on a Marvel run since we started the channel because I've never seen any of those Marvel movies like at all. Wasn't really a fan of superheroes growing up. We're still continuing on that journey. And then we're trying to put out some really just one off type movies that are really. And mostly our Patreons pick. So if you guys want to be part of the vote, you can go over there. Well, we're trying to nominate movies for the polls that are culturally relevant that we haven't seen but are also um, highly requested right and also movies that are going to help us watch other movies going forward because early on on the channel guys just a little bit about our history we reacted it's a scary movie it did really good for us we really enjoyed the movie it was so much fun to just laugh together and right. experience that because neither one of us has seen it and i think 
90 percent of the comments was just letting us know that we didn't get 90 percent of the references so i'm 90 percent sure that we need to watch 90 percent more movies <laughs> yeah and then we'll watch it so so this was a good start because there's absolutely. a lot of references in future life that i needed to know from this movie absolutely i don't know what is a better character uh captain miller or forrest gump but i know one thing tom hanks you're an absolute legend, man. Uh, if you're in it, I'm down to watch it. So if you got any more Tom Hanks films you're trying to get Yeah, to comment watch, your favorite Tom Hanks movie below. Yeah, let it us know. It has to be this one, right? This has got to be the best one. Well, it has to be. Saving Private Ryan had me feeling some type oh. of way when I watched it, though. You know. But do you, is that one a Tom Hanks? Yeah, it is. But at the end of the day, that one's about is. war. And when you watch a movie about war, it just brings a certain darkness over my spirit. In a way that this one elevated my spirit, that movie, in a sense, made me feel very depressed and dark maybe in a way right so do you think i didn't get in this do you think there's like a half and half like when you say tom hanks some people are like forrest gump and some people are like captain miller um or do you think some people are like woody you know you might be surprised how many people like woody woody's i mean i mean let's be honest man like these two characters are iconic but woody's pretty pretty iconic there's a snake in his boot <laughs> someone poisoned his water hose you know what i'm saying yeah. we all know that tom and hanks is awesome to be honest we've both seen that and you haven't seen this Right. But at well, the end it's of the day, if that shows adults, you what so. I was watching back then, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's why I wasn't watching this. Was right. Watching, like, stuff like well, that. Like I said, man, because we didn't have movies and stuff. So my friend Michael was all like, you know, Forrest Gumping around the hallways all the time. So I was just like, not understanding anything he was saying to me. And so, dude, I figured out a way and I watched it. I don't even remember where I got the movie. I'm pretty sure my neighbor had it. The same neighbor I told you guys about in my, uh, <laughs> Back your neighbor had all movie. the bangers well he did have quite a few movies and didn't they have lord of the rings but my dad and my parents wouldn't let me watch rated r movies you know um i don't really think that he really cared so much my dad just really liked rules and my <laughs> neighbors just wouldn't really let me watch things unless it was age appropriate because they didn't want my dad to go over there mad so yeah for some reason things. my dad didn't let me watch this one and i can i can see why because there was like drugs in it and stuff so i can assume that's why i wasn't allowed to but. guys come hang out with us again we're gonna keep reacting to stuff like this that was horace gump that was amazing are we just hanging on here because we don't want it to always end? dude like <laughs> we always say we get one chance in life to document a movie like forrest gump and you get one chance in life to see it and so when we watch these movies like this man it's really hard to get off the recording because once you just it's don't done, want it to end. There's no Forrest Gump part end. two, and I'm not. Please gonna... don't remake it though. Please don't. Well, you know, guys, I could make a three-hour podcast breaking down every little scene and piece of symbolism and element and every motive and eye gesture of this movie. And to be honest, that actually kind of sounds fun to me because I really like talking about <laughs> these movies. But I can't do it right now, man, because I didn't like write out some script. We just watched it fresh off the dome. So I don't really remember all those details particularly, but I do remember the movie, obviously. You know, how can and I? And what's not? your favorite way to eat shrimp? Comment below. Right. I think mine is fried and over some rice and vegetable. Oh, you do? Yeah. All right, guys, that's it. Peace.